Good morning. It is about 6 a.m. on July 15th, 2024. I'm coming to you from Dixon, Tennessee. I've been, my sister and I um, flew into Tennessee, um, Nashville, <laughs> on Wednesday and um, been down here and heading out a little later this morning heading back to the airport but just had have had an amazing time came to a conference here in Van Leer Tennessee which is about 15 minutes from where we're staying right now um, a conference by messengers of Shiloh and Terry Bennett and the conference was the the title of the conference and the, the message of the conference was the time of the everlasting gospel that of revelation chapter 14 and revelation 14 of course <clears throat> is the context is speaking of the 144,000 on mount zion who follow the lamb wherever he goes and for, coming forth from them is this everlasting gospel that shall go unto every tribe, every nation, every tongue. And then the end shall come. This 144,000 are this first fruits company that bring forth the full testimony of Jesus Christ into the earth. This vessel that the Lord has been waiting for to finish to finish the work in the earth, to bring in his everlasting kingdom, as Daniel speaks of. This is a vessel that will bear the full testimony of Jesus Christ. And so I'm just gonna give you a little, before I get started here, a little view of where we got to stay, we got to um, rent or whatever this little cabin here pretty secluded place here you can see it there's our little cabin up there so me being a country boy this is my kind of place <laughs> it's been amazing Amazing fellowshipping with the believers, the remnant people we've met here. Um, the first couple days we stayed with our friends Rachel and Krista. And um, some other brethren. And uh, in the last few days we've stayed here at, at this cabin. There is no Wi-Fi at this place, so I'm not able to go live, or if I've been really able to release anything here because I haven't had any signal, but I thought I'm gonna record something that the Lord began to release to me, and I believe it's very significant for this hour to bring forth the full testimony of Jesus Christ in his remnant people. And so I'm just gonna open with prayer. Father, I just thank you for this hour that a people are coming forth into you that will fully lay down their lives. That would be transfigured into the very image of your son. That the full testimony of the person of your son would be manifested into the earth. Unto every tribe, unto every nation, unto every tongue. That all shall see him through this vessel, through this John the Baptist vessel, through these wise virgins. Father, we thank you for the revelation coming forth to bring us forth into the fullness. I thank you for a simplicity 
I thank you for your grace to walk in it. As you say in Psalm chapter 89, verse 13, blessed, no, says thou hast a mighty arm. Yahweh, you have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand, high is your right hand. Justice and judgment or righteousness and judgment are the habitation, the foundation of your throne, wherefore your very image and likeness abides. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation or the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth shall go before your face. Those who walk in these paths of mercy and truth, bringing forth the full manifestation of your face, your testimony into the earth. Mercy and truth shall go before your face. These are the eternal paths of the Melchizedek priesthood, the very paths that the Lord walks in, and those who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. Mercy and truth shall go before your face. Blessed are the people that know the joyful shout. The King James says that know the joyful sound it's the Hebrew word teruah. Literally means shout. It can also mean a shout that's brought forth with trumpets, right? Feast of trumpets, yam teruah. Blessed are the people that know the joyful shout. What is that joyful shout? It's the shout of David and his company as they brought the Ark of the Covenant up unto Zion. It is that shout that was sung as the glory came into Solomon's temple when it was built. It was the shout in the time of Nehemiah and Ezra when the temple was rebuilt. That shout is, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever. Blessed are the people that know the joyful shout. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, <laughs> in the knowing of you. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, and in your name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor, our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, our shield, the Holy One of Israel, our King. Then thou spakest in vision to the Holy One and said, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. This is a psalm that was not written by David. This was written after David had passed. This is speaking of, of a Davidic company, of this Melchizedek priesthood. David means beloved. This is his beloved son that brings forth the full testimony of Jesus Christ into the earth through this Melchizedek priesthood. Then thou spakest in vision to the Holy One and said, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I've exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Lord, we thank you for the anointing of your spirit. May we continue in this goodness the goodness of the olive tree grafted into you, grafted into Israel. With my holy oil have I anointed him to be a king and a priest. 
with whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. The beast, the beast system. For as it says in Malachi, he will keep his son. He will guard him as his son. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face, and I will plague those that hate him. But my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. And I will set his hand in the seas and his right hand in the river. This is alluding to Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. It is the Lord taking back that which is rightfully he is through a people that fully manifest him. Take, taking back the first dominion. As Micah 4 speaks of, the first dominion. And he shall set his hand in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. And he shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God, the rock of my salvation, and I will make him my firstborn. The firstborn was the Lord himself, his son. I will make this Davidic company my firstborn. They will fully manifest my son. They abide in him, in him, in them. They bring forth the full testimony to the full measure, to the full stature of the measure of Christ. And I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. And my mercy will I keep for him forever. And my covenant shall stand fast with him. Father, I thank you for what you have foreordained before the foundation of the world. That you saw this hour there would be a people that would make themselves ready. A vessel in whom you could express the fullness of your person. that then that everlasting gospel may be taken to all of creation, into the heavenlies, to manifest this love to all of creation. Terry Bennett in January, and, and maybe I'll try to link this in the description uh, so you can see these, but. Terry was caught up into the councils of the Lord before the throne in, I believe it was January of this year of 2024. And in that council was a number of saints, John the Baptist, John the Beloved, James, Enoch, others, Paul, the Apostle Paul, and one of the things in this council is that was brought forth, it was in regards to this vessel, this end time vessel. That must come forth, that must prepare the way of the Lord. Just as John the Baptist prepared the vessel, was the vessel that prepared the way for the Lord's first coming. Now, too, there must be this vessel, this corporate vessel that prepares the way 
for the Lord's coming kingdom, millennial reign on this earth, and then taking that kingdom into all of his creation. And in this council, it is spoken of how the 144,000 is made up of two vessels. It is made up of a John the Baptist vessel and of the wise virgins make up this 144,000 company. These wise virgins who entered in, there were 10 virgins, five didn't enter in, five did not have the oil. And he tells us in that record, the Lord, he says, I, they came to enter back in, they went and bought some oil and came to enter back in, the doors were shut. He said, I don't know you. They didn't enter into this way that I am going to speak of. They didn't walk in the light of his face. They did not do as David says, search me, O God, and know me. Search me with your eyes. Search me with the seven spirits of God. As it says in the book of Revelation, as we see the lamb in the midst of the throne having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, which search to and throw throughout all the earth. Search me with your seven spirits of God. Oh. Your eyes, Lord. that all that is not of you would be removed. And David says there, contrary to what was spoken to the foolish virgins, I don't know you. David says in Psalm 139, O Lord, I have searched you. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. Because David walked in these paths and this Davidic company shall walk in these paths to bring forth this full testimony. So Father Yahweh, I thank you for showing us your ways and teaching us your paths that we may walk in them. Just as Enoch walked in them the very paths of your son, the paths of mercy and truth, this mercy and truth that go before your face. I'm gonna to go to 1 John chapter one John says, that which is from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested. The word was made flesh. For the life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and show unto you the eternal life. What is eternal life? John 17, 3. This is eternal life that you may know him. That you may become one with him. That the word may become flesh in you. That you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and show unto you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. This John the Baptist vessel, this 
wise virgin company of these 144,000 shall bring this forth. That which was from the beginning, the Alpha, which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and show unto you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we have spoken unto you that your joy might be full. Where is fullness of joy? Psalm 1611, in his presence, it says, but that's the Hebrew word panim, literally means face. In his face is fullness of joy. What does that mean? It's coming face to face. It's being transfigured into his very image. It's his face coming upon you. Blessed are the people that know the joyful shout. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of your face. And as they walk in the light of your face, your face is coming upon them. This is the ironic blessings of Numbers chapter 16. The Lord bless you and keep you. That's outer court. That's at the brazen altar. As David says in Psalm 32, blessed is the man whose transgression is sin, whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Where's that? It's coming into the inner court within our own heart. The Lord make his face shine upon you. This is how we enter into, O Lord, search me. We must enter into the holy place to come into full measuredness. That's just the beginning of coming into full measuredness of him, unto the full stature of him, where he has searched us and known us. The Lord make his face shine upon you because there is the lampstand with the seven seven branch lampstand, which are the eyes of the Lord looking to and fro, searching the hearts, bringing forth the revelation of him into the hearts of his people. Those who will attend to this lamp. And he, the Son of Man, is walking amidst that lampstand. For he suffered. He died on the cross to bring forth the anointing that would bring forth the revelation of him into the hearts of his people. As we know, the seven-branch golden lampstand, as it was formed in the under the old covenant in, in the wilderness that It was a beaten work representing the sufferings of Christ to bring forth this anointing Holy Spirit poured out to us. That's why we see the Son of Man walking amidst the lampstand. That his person would be manifested through us and to us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. His grace is there to be transfigured by this revelation, by this searching. As across from the golden lampstand was the golden altar, the the table, the table of showbread, literally means the bread of faces. the revelation of his face. This is our daily bread to commune in this place.
and in this place we also come to the golden altar of incense where I'm going to go in a moment. But the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord does not turn his face to you as, as this popular song sings. It's not turn his face. It's much stronger than that. It's the Lord lift up his face upon you. It's image likeness restored. It's the glory. It's his full testimony coming forth out of a vessel. The Lord lift up his face upon you. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is the Melchizedek priesthood that enters into the holiest of all. Where mercy and truth have met at the Ark of the Covenant. The Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. That's image restored. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion in the earth. I will set his hand in the sea, in his right hand in the rivers, and he shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, the rock of my salvation, and I will make him my firstborn. Higher than the kings of the earth. We see this in Isaiah 60. <laughs> As all nations and all kingdoms and kings come and bow to Zion. As his full testimony comes forth out of this people who bear his image and his likeness in full measuredness unto the fullness of the stature of Christ. But how do we get there? Under the Levitical priesthood, the blood of bulls and goats couldn't take you into the holiest of all to abide there. Only once a year did the high priest go into a holy place. The Holy Spirit, as it says in Hebrews chapter 9, the Holy Spirit thus signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was still standing. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Blessed are the people that know the joyful shout which is, oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever, because they pass through the work of the cross. And they come into the holy place where his face is shining upon them, bringing them into the full revelation of the seven spirits of God. This lamp is within ourselves. When you become born again, this lamp is relit within yourself. This is what Proverbs 20, verse 27, 28, we see this very clearly. You see, he is, who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So this is an inward work. The tabernacle was to show us the inner work. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, 28. How does it go? <laughs> the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, the King James says, but it's better translated, the lamp. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. Searching. There's the eyes of the Lord looking to and fro. To and fro. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. Mercy and truth preserve the king. And the throne is upholden in mercy. 
in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Mercy and truth preserve the king. Mercy and truth go before his face, before, for his face to be fully manifested in us. We have to walk in these paths of mercy and truth. Mercy and truth preserve the king in the very will of God. For by mercy and truth, it says in Proverbs 16, 6, by mercy and truth or through mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. What is iniquity? It is the old man nature. The sin nature. Not just by mercy iniquity is purged. Not just by truth iniquity is purged. But by mercy and truth. When mercy and truth have met together, iniquity is purged. The old man nature. Which causes you to go your own way. According to your own will. Just as Lucifer was perfect in all his ways until iniquity was found in him. Isaiah 53 says, We all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him. Yahweh has laid on the Son the iniquity of us all. Under the old covenant. You can't go back to the old covenant laws. You can't. It's not by keeping those laws that iniquity is purged. Only by walking in the paths of mercy and truth. When mercy and truth meet together. They meet together at the golden altar of incense. It's only as they meet together mercy and truth. That iniquity is purged. And the king of glory comes in. Isaiah 16.5 says, In mercy the throne is established. This throne of the tabernacle of David. This corporate vessel. This Melchizedek priesthood. In mercy, the throne is established, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And he, the king of glory, shall sit upon it. This is a throne. He shall sit upon it in truth. In mercy, the throne is established. And he shall sit upon it in truth. In the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. There's Righteousness and judgment are the habitation or the foundation of his throne. Let me go to back to 1 John. I kind of took a little diversion there. <laughs> That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested. The word became flesh. And we have seen and bear witness and show unto you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. To show us who we really are. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we have spoken unto you, that your joy might be full in his face. That which we have heard of him declare we unto you. That God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. This is 
this fellowship of walking in these eternal paths of mercy and truth. He is this light of truth. Walking in the light is not near, merely keeping the commandments. You can, you can seek to keep the commandments and not be transfigured into his image and likeness. Walking in the light is not merely saying, look at me, I keep the commandments. I am a Torah keeper. I eat clean. No, this is not walking in the light. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, we're yoked to him, we're walking with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So what are we doing? We're walking in this light of truth. We're walking in the light of his face. His eyes are searching us. The seven spirits of God, this light of the lampstand within us is shining into our heart. And when it reveals something that is of darkness, the mercy is there to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What, what, what this is speaking of, of this fellowship of walking with him, where we're walking in mercy and truth. But in this fellowship, we're taking it to the golden altar of incense. Where we join with our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is the key of David. It's joining these two things, mercy and truth, whereby iniquity, the old man, the sin nature is purged. We can walk in this light as he shines this light upon us and it can, it can expose sin nature and we're not condemned because his mercy is there. If we repent and turn and continue to walk in the light. We take it forth to the golden altar of incense and offer it up unto him. In our intercession, joining with the high priest who stands to ever make intercession for us. David speaks of this in Psalm 141. It's verse 2 or 3 where he says, David says, Let my prayer be set forth before you as incense and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. What is he do doing? He's joining the evening sacrifice, which was when the Lord was slain on the cross. When he died on the cross and the brazen altar. Let my prayer be set forth before you as incense. He's joining the golden altar of incense with the cross. That the word may be made flesh. When you join mercy and truth, the word is made flesh. Iniquity is purged. And so when we walk in the light and we're not quenching the spirit, but as soon as Holy Spirit points out that which is not of him, we're not condemned, but we, we rejoice in his mercy, in his shed blood, and we take that joining ourselves to the cross and going to the golden altar of incense to come into agreement with his eternal will.
that his word would be made flesh in us, that his testimony may go forth unto all of creation. Let my prayer be set forth before you as incense and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. There is mercy and truth meeting together. The brazen altar, the cross, is the altar of mercy. And you enter into the holy place, you're, you're entering into the light of his truth. As his face is shining upon you through Holy Spirit, you're eating of your daily bread. And then you join those two altars at the golden altar of incense. Under the anointing of Holy Spirit, the anointing of Holy Spirit joins those two altars together. We can see this clearly in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 22. This is a revelation that the Lord released to me. In 2012, I was on a 12-day fast. The Lord released this to me. I call it Paul's golden lampstand. It's seven verses, just like the lampstand. Verses 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And it perfectly gives us the picture of this lampstand. It gives us this picture of this fellowship of the mystery, of mercy and truth meeting together and iniquity being purged. It's walking in the light of his face. Mercy and truth go before his face. Blessed are the people that know the joyful shout. They shall walk in the light of your face. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. It means as the light shines upon us, if we don't go to the golden altar of incense, we're, we're walking in darkness. If we don't join in him with his, this eternal this incense arising in this prayer of, Father, I was created. This is who I am. I renounce that lie of the old man. And I thank you for the power of your blood, the authority of your word to make the word flesh in me that iniquity would be purged, that my own will would be purged. I will abide in you and you in me, John 15, 7. That is abiding in this place. That is the secret place, the secret of his face, literally. The secret of his face is where the word is made flesh and we overcome the sin nature. It's not just the blood. It's not just his truth. It's them coming together and Holy Spirit weaving his D the DNA, the divine nature back into us. Imputing righteousness back into us. But if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. How does he do that? He imputes his righteousness. Holy Spirit weaves the DNA of the divine nature back into you. And the Lord, in greater measure, sits upon his throne within you. In mercy, the throne established, and he shall sit upon it in truth as we believe that truth and we offer it up unto the Lord, joined with his mercy, with the shed blood, it brings us into the holiest of all, where at the Ark of the Covenant, this is the covenant. The covenant is made up of the two immutable things of mercy and truth. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. The old man, there is his throne because the will of man has been purged and we've come in agreement to his will. If you abide in me, in my mercy, in my shed blood, and my words, my rhema, my sayings, abide in you, 
my truth. It's those two coming together. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Why? Because your will has become, my will has become your will. Your iniquity has been purged. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples, my learners. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Mercy and truth preserve the king, preserves us in his will. David speaks of this in Psalm 16, right off the bat in Psalm 16. He said, preserve me, O God, preserve me in mercy and truth. Preserve me in your will, in the covenant. The two immutable things of the covenant, the blood of the covenant and the oath, the promise, the truth, who is the Lord himself king of glory in us Christ in you the hope of glory lift up your heads O ye gates the gates of praise Zion's gates of praise as it says in Psalm 60 her walls are salvation and her gates are praise praising him for the blood praising him for his mercy Lift up your heads, O ye gates of Zion, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. There in Psalm 141, David says, Set a watch, O Lord, over my mouth, that it would bring forth your praise. Keep the door of my lips. That is, I am a man. I was a man of unclean lips. Bring me to the golden altar of incense and the seraphim take the coal and cleanse my lips that it would come into agreement with your eternal will. Keep the door of my lips that it would come into agreement with your eternal will as I offer up this prayer before you that the word would be made flesh as I am joining mercy and truth together. So back there to Psalm, uh, 1 Thessalonians, I don't know where I went on that. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 22, we see this golden lampstand of Paul's. First verse, seven verses in this. Rejoice evermore, that's one verse. <laughs> that's verse 16. What's the next verse? Pray without ceasing. Okay, what's going on? Rejoice evermore. What are we to rejoice over? The brazen altar, the cross. Okay, thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. David says in Psalm 26, he says, I will compass your altar, speaking of the brazen altar, with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works of the work of the cross. There in Psalm 26, David is speaking of mercy and truth. So back there to Paul's golden lampstand, or 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 22. You're going to see this played out. We're going to go back and forth between the altars and joining them, the two joining each of them together. Rejoice evermore, the golden altar of incense, the altar of his mercy, the shed blood of the covenant. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. There's the altar of truth. Where we're praying, Father, thank you who you created me to be. If he just, is, if his light just shined on you and, and he showed you, you're impatient. <laughs> thank you, Father. That love is patient. I thank you. I come into your cream, eternal will. This is who you created me to be. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Now we're going back to the golden altar of incense. And now we're going back to the brazen altar again. It's back and forth, back and forth, as these two altars are being joined together and iniquity is being purged. Rejoice evermore. 
pray without ceasing, mercy and truth meeting together. In everything, give thanks. Once again, we're giving him thanks for his mercy. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. We've come to the center branch. The servant branch. Quench not the goodness of the Lord. Quench not his presence. Walk in this fellowship. Abide in the secret place. Continue in his goodness, the anointing of the olive tree, lest you be broken off in your unbelief. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Mercy and truth meeting together. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. That's that center branch. Now we're coming to the last three. Despise not prophesying. So everything giving thanks and despising not prophesying. Those are mercy and truth meeting together again. Where's the despise not prophesying? At the altar of incense, the golden altar of incense. Not only is it prayer, it's pro prophetic declaration. It's prophesying his testimony. No, I'm long suffering. I envy not, I vaunt not myself. Not only pray it, we prophesy it. The spirit of the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. We're coming back now to the gold, to the brazen altar, the cross. Oh, give thanks in the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Prove all things that are good. And then we're coming again to the golden altar, incense. Abstain from all appearance of evil. In the seven spirits of God, what is the seventh one that's listed in Isaiah 11. And there came forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That's that center branch. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and of might. The Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. See how they're paired up? It's walking in this fellowship of mercy and truth being joined together. knowledge and fear of the Lord. That's the last of the seven mentioned there. And that lines up with Paul's golden lampstand. Abstain from all appearance of evil. We do that through the fear of the Lord. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Proverbs 16, 6. Okay, so I'm going to go through the whole thing here. And go into verse 23 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice evermore. See yourself walking in the light. And the Son of Man walking amidst the lampstand. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace shall sanctify you wholly, completely. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. What did David say? Oh, preserve me, O oh God. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which shall preserve me. David says in Psalm chapter 31. Psalm 31. No, Psalm 61. I'm sorry. David says, prepare mercy and truth. He says, preserve the king. 
Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which shall preserve me. Prepare this table before me in the presence of my enemies. It is mercy and truth. It's the blood of the covenant and it's truth, but we join it together at the golden altar of incense. As the Lord sits at that table with us. And we offer it up in intercession with him. I thank you, Lord, that you do not condemn to those who abide in you who abide in your mercy, there is no condemnation. For we can walk in the light, and as soon as your light points out darkness, there is mercy there, there is grace there. That the word would be made flesh, that this is not our work, but it's your work. We are the people of your pasture, the sheep of your hand. This people you have formed for yourself. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. What is this? This is the bride made ready. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless in this fellowship of the mystery, walking in the eternal paths of mercy and truth. As Jeremiah 6.16 says, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the ancient or the eternal, the olam is the Hebrew, the eternal paths where is the good way, the way of love, and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. So, Lord, we thank you for the power of your blood that you shed. We thank you for the authority of your word. As John said, as many as believed in him, the word. John 1 begins with, in the beginning was the word. As many as believed in him, to them gave he the power, the King James says, but it's the Greek word exousia. It's the authority. To them gave he the authority to become the children of God. As many as believed in his name, as his name, the word. And the word became flesh and dwelt in us. John the Apostle John is speaking of, about the Word being made flesh in him and the Apostles as they walked in the light, as he is in the light. As they joined mercy and truth together, as they took authority to pray without ceasing, to despise not prophesying, to abstain from all appearance of evil. And iniquity was purged, and the DNA of God was weaved back into them. And the Word was made flesh. As many as believed in Him, to them gave He the authority to become the children of God, as many as believe in His name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, it says in the Greek. The Word became flesh and dwelt in us, it says, the Greek, it's not, it's not among us. This is not speaking of the Lord's incarnation into the earth as he came as a child. It's speaking about him being formed in us, the word being made flesh. And the word became flesh and dwelt in us, Christ in you. It's the Greek preposition "n," same, same preposition used here in 1 John that's used in Colossians 1.27. Christ in you. And the word became flesh and dwelt in us, and we beheld his glory, the king of glory sitting in us, manifesting himself. And the word became flesh and dwelt in us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.
the Lord spoke to me a number of years and says, I am raising up the tabernacle of David for a habitation for the king of glory. In the tabernacle of David was the Ark of the Covenant. This covenant where the two immutable things of the covenant meet, mercy and truth, where we had the mercy seat and under it was the testimonies. This testimony of Jesus Christ coming forth. Father, I thank you for bringing us into a place of simplicity. I thank you for acceleration in the word being made flesh. That we would come to the full stature of you. Not by our works, but by your work. As Ephesians 2 says, And you who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conduct in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the will of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together, has made us alive together. For by grace are you saved through faith. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness. It's the Greek word krestos or krestostate, krestotes, I forget which. It means goodness that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his goodness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. This is the picture of the tabernacle, the altar of mercy, coming to the golden, the menorah, the golden lampstand, the seven spirits of God, his light, his face shining upon us that gives us our daily bread. And then we take that to the golden altar of incense. And the coals that are on the golden altar of incense come from the coals of the brazen altar where the lamb was slain. And so mercy is being joined with truth there, is being joined with our intercession, with our prophesying. And we're brought into the holiest of all where mercy and truth meet. May we abide in this covenant. May we abide in this fellowship. May we abide at this table with you, Lord. where you set, you set a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You've anointed our head with oil. Our cup runs over. He that dwelleth in the secret place, that word place isn't there, it's literally the secret of his face, where the word is made flesh. He that dwelleth in the secret of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What is that shadow? It's the shadow of his hand placed upon his beloved son, David, saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He that dwelleth in the secret of his face shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27 says, the eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. What's the refuge? It's his hands. <laughs> his left hand is his hand of mercy. His right hand is his hand of truth, where he forms us, where the word is being made flesh. He 
He that dwelleth in the secret of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence, from that carnal nature. He shall cover me with His feathers, these feathers of the cherubim over the throne, where mercy and truth meet. As we see in the, in the picture of the Ark of the Covenant, these wings overspread this throne where we have the mercy seat and under it the testimonies. This is the secret place where the word is made flesh. Under your wings will I trust. Your truth shall be my shield and my buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Actually, it doesn't say there, there. It's not the hands of the angels. They shall bear you up into the hands of the Father. See, the Father's hands are mercy and truth. He is the potter forming us as we abide here. Isaiah 65 verse 2 says, I have stretched forth my hands all day long to a disobedient and gainsaying people who walk after their own ways according to their own thoughts. Come, let Come, mercy and truth, go before my face. Walk in these paths where you're transformed back into my image and likeness. Well, that sun's getting warm. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I ask that you would quicken this into our hearts. That there would come a simplicity to walk this out an acceleration thank you for trigger, triggering an acceleration within us in your first fruits that corporately the son of man would be crucified and you would be manifested that your full, full testimony would go forth unto all your creation. Love you guys. I'll release more. David said in Psalm 2510, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies those things which testify of him. Come into agreement with those testimonies of the Lord. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, Psalm 2510, unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. And then verse 11, David says, For thy name's sake, pardon mine iniquity, for his great, the sin nature my own way for your name's sake why because in this name that he proclaimed to Moses when he said show me your glory in that name is mercy and truth compassionate gracious long-suffering abundant in mercy and truth for your name's sake Lord pardon my iniquity I will abide in your name the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, into the secret of his face. Into the care of his hands. Holy Spirit, do only what you can do. That your Davidic company would arise. In Jesus' name, amen.